Welcome to the Big Box PC Game <laughs> Man, I screwed it up again. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Box PC Game Collectors Bidcast. Today we have a very special guest. Ben Lesnick is the world's biggest Wing Commander fan. He founded WC News, which is the premier Wing Commander news site. Currently, he is Director of Community Engagement and Content Strategy at Cloud Imperium Games, whose current project is the much-anticipated Star Citizen. So welcome, Ben. We're super thrilled to have you here. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Joe has been mentioning this forever, and uh, I, I lurk in your Facebook group, and it's it's like my favorite Facebook group because everybody's just always so excited and positive about games, so it's cool to be here. I just, I just want you to know that uh, I've only known you for a few minutes personally, and I already like you better than Joe, so that's that's a good thing. Is that, is that really common? saying all that much, though? <laughs> hey, how much, how much did Joe pay you to say that? <laughs> uh, so we'll start off here. I want to go back to the very beginning, Ben. Yeah, so I think this is a good lead-off question. But uh, I personally have very concrete memories of playing the most important games in my life, and I'd say it's probably fair to say that Wing Commander changed your life considerably. Absolutely. Can you describe your first memories of playing this game? Yes, I can. Um, I was living in France as a teenager, um, and a friend of mine had a pirated copy. And I remember we started it up, and we were just in awe at that <clears throat> little bit you see before the copyright question. And then we spent the rest of the day guessing numbers to try to actually play the game um, until I think we eventually figured out that Maniac is 23. Uh, that's the easiest of the copyright questions to guess. And uh, that was it. I was sold after uh, after I played that. Uh, yeah. Wow! Yeah, it, uh... That that intro is is amazing. I mean, like that. I, that's what I think. My dad bought the game when I was a kid, and I was like, whatever. I'm not so into space shooters. And then when I saw that intro, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. I have to play this game. I think it drew a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. Flying towards the screen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just mind blowing, you know. Uh, uh, just an awesome, uh, uh, probably one of the greatest uh, uh, space sims ever ever made. Easily. Um, let's see here. Uh, and also, what is you, you're you're famous for? Kind of having a, a absolutely massive uh, Wing Commander collection, or uh, so Joe uh, Joe tells me. What would you say? is the most prized piece in your Wing Commander collection? Um, I think it probably has to be one that uh, Joe actually found, the uh, the prototype toy for the... Uh, they did a toy line for the Wing Commander movie, and uh, Joe and I have the two prototype ships. He's got the Karathi one, and I've got the uh, human one. Uh, that, that's probably my... Most thing I'm most amazed that I own. <laughs> Tell that story. Tell that story. That's a great story. Okay, I, I could certainly tell that story. Uh, so, back in 1999, yeah, there was a Wing Commander movie. It was a terrible failure, and so on and so on. But uh, this new toy company called X Toys went to the licensing expo that year, and I don't know what was wrong with them, but they, they ended up with a license for Wing Commander, Wild Wild West, and 1980s Saturday Night Live. <laughs> and uh, so they, they put out the Wing Commander action figures in the back of the box advertised that there would be spaceships for them to fly, and it, they were really cheap action figures. They, they looked like the old Star Wars ones and without as much detail, and of course, nobody wanted a Wing Commander action figure for Fist Jr., so it was, it was a terrible flop you could find in the dollar stores. But we'd seen the, like, pictures of the prototypes at, like, Toy Fair, so we knew they, they actually made these ships. And um, so Joe's wife, uh, Paula, did some research and reached out to the, the guy who ran the company. Uh, his name was Bob LaMonico. And he agreed to sell us these ships, and Joe and I went to... Uh, to meet him at like a diner in Virginia to hand over money and get two spaceships. Um, I just remember he was he was like this really he was like a middle aged man. He was like super super nice, but he just seemed kind of sad. 
And uh, I, I think we were like, oh, what are, what are you here for? And he was like, oh, you know, we had some trouble with our toy line in the past, but our fourth line is going to be these to these. Uh, we're going to team up with this uh, it's like skating pro, and we're going to do a line of toy skateboards. And I think Joe and I were both like, oh, is it Tony Hawk? And the guy was like, why does everyone keep asking me that? No. I, I don't know if his toy skateboards ever came out. Uh, so, so Ben and I ended up getting these things, and uh, I didn't have enough money to, to buy them both. I'm like, are you in? He's like, yeah. So we split it right down the middle, and he got the – the Federation ship, and I got the Kilrathi ship. They're prototypes. There's only one of each one of them. It's the prototype that went to, I guess, China or Japan, wherever they mass produce them. And they're really high quality. I mean, they're made out of not just regular plastic. It's some kind of real heavy-duty stuff to probably, you know, withstand the, the molding process of this stuff. So they're one of a kinds, and they probably never went to Japan, and they sat in this guy's closet under his staircase for, you know, I don't know, 10 years maybe? I don't know, five years. How big, how big are they, Joe? That's not the first time you've ever asked me that question. <laughs> I mean, these toys, they uh, none of them ever went to market at all, because never, I've never even heard of them. They're uh, the, the prototype. prototype. But not the ships. They, uh... Oh, wow. The action figures you can get online, and you can get them all for, I think, 99 cents. That's the Kilrathi ship? This is the Kilrathi ship. from Dralfi, the Dralfi class? Very good. He's all over it. Look at that. <laughs> That's one incredible. I love the most. It, was, it has little buttons on it because it shoots, it shoots the little lasers out of it. It was really, really cool. What a shame that that never hit the stores. I'd have been all over that. Oh, yeah. As, as a kid back then, I would have been like, all right, I'm buying that, I'm buying that, I'm buying that. But it was very cool. Okay. I want to jump in now, if that's all right, Joe. You go for it, Joe. I want to keep going. I want to keep going by doing a stump the band with Ben Lesnick. What I love about Ben is that he's actually been here before. And he goes through my stuff, and he finds and gives me more information on my artifacts than even I know. So first I'm going to give him an easy one, and I want to, I want to hear from you, Ben, and, and you tell me something about this particular item, okay? Look at this. Okay. Ah, yeah, I think I know what that one is. <laughs> this is a manual called Star Soldier. That is the manual? Yeah, tell me about this. That is uh, the uh, manual for the uh, Xbox Live Arcade Wing Commander Arena that came out uh, in 2007. Um, normally, Xbox Live Arcade games don't have manuals because they're just downloads. Uh, but this was uh, released as a PDF, and then Electronic Arts liked it so much they printed up a bunch for, uh, I think, E3 that year. But you were definitely and, involved in an integral way in the creation of this. Yes, I, that, that is all me. I, I pitched and designed and wrote this one. He designed and wrote it and actually gave it away for Wing Commander fans everywhere. And I mean, it's, what is it? It's like 80 pages. It's, no, 60 pages. It's amazing. I mean, and inside jokes from Wing Commander and inside jokes from members of the Wing Commander community. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because we wanted something like the old, uh, the old manuals for the new one. I just think it's very, very cool because this is something not a lot of people have, and you were directly involved in the creation of it. Okay, here's <laughs> something that's ridiculously weird. I want to know, and I got a feeling that he'll be able to identify what this is. Can you tell me what these are? Oh, those are the uh, the bits from uh, Prince Dracot's forehead. Absolutely. He knows the jewels that go on the forehead of Prince Thrakat himself. What are the odds? Could anybody else have guessed that aside from Ben? That's amazing. I would have said guitar picks. I would have said it's your kidney stones. 
These are my kidney stones. Yeah, those are actually one of the only carried over from Wing Commander 2 to Wing Commander 2. The, uh, the like, lion drawing of him has those also. Because apparently Kilrathi's wore jewelry. Oh. Pussies. Uh-huh. All right, one more, quickly. Tell me about this. Well, that is Wing Commander 1 for the uh, FM Towns, uh, which is a Japanese uh, PC, quasi-PC from the uh, early 90s. Um, most people probably know the uh, Ultima games for the FM Towns because they did things like have full speech for Ultima 6. Um, for Wing Commander, they... Didn't put uh, Wing Commander was always a failure in Japan. They they kept trying to push it and it never worked. Um, so they didn't have full speech or anything, but it does have I think voices during the communications, and it comes with this cool map. That is a cool map. That's an amazing map. Was there any guesses as to why it failed when a lot of other Origin games did succeed? Uh, <laughs> is it four of them? them or? Well, that. Is there any idea or like guesses as to why Wing Commander more so than Ultima failed in Japan? Is it just more of because it was space or? Yeah, um, what I've heard uh, from marketing people recently is that to sell science fiction in Japan, it needs to have a very specific bent to it. Um, I mean, I, I could see. I mean, Wing Commander is essentially the. Pacific War of World War II, but in space. I, I can certainly see how that would not be as exciting there. <laughs> yeah, that might pose a problem. But it had big rubber monsters. With yeah, like there were aspects of it that would speak to a lot of Japanese people, but there were like, it was one of those things where it's like, is it because it's space? Is it kind of the historical undertones behind it? Is it because... They at that point in time just preferred more of the kind of the rise of the JRPG, that very you know micromanaging and a lot of that other aspects that we, well, some of us still really loved about the Ultima series. There's always been this weird like uh, dissociation between like Western RPGs don't do well over there either, and uh, JRPGs do do well over here, but. Um, I don't know. They uh, culturally, they just don't seem to uh, jive over there for some reason. Yeah, but for some reason, Ultima did more so, and it's just it's kind of weird. I don't know if it's just the timing culturally for them, or just how the industry has changed so much. Yeah, perhaps they kind of looked at wizardry and um, Ultima, and they just kind of ran with it, and you know, did their own thing. But I think their marketing strategy is just a little bit off, which is perfectly evident from the back cover of this. If you'll notice, it's you know, it's a cinematic movie. It's it's an it's a wonderful effect, and and it has different scenes and fantastic ship fights, and girls love it. No, those are the yeah, those are the voice actresses because um, they they did uh, communications voices. So that's the actresses for Angel and Spirit. Oh, I which see. Is, I can sell it. That's really cool. Oh, that is neat. Well, my joke flopped. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have here that goes alongside that. Wing Commander 2 for the FM Towns. Cool. I don't have that. This this was the one I kind of went crazy for a couple of years trying to find. Um, I remember when they closed down Origin, or when they when they laid off the uh, Wing Commander team, John Gunsel took took a copy of this from the library and showed it to me. I was like, oh my god, it's Wing Commander with different cover art. I have to find this. This was like in the early, early, like 2000 internet. Uh, so it, it was a couple of years of searching eBay auctions and weird Japanese web shops. But Ben has been, my gosh, you have been the Wing Commander aficionado since before 1995. I mean, when the net was new. You know, Wing Commander News has been around since when? 95? 97? Yeah, Wing Commander News, I guess, actually started in uh, 98, but we, we had a previous site uh, that we started in uh, 94, uh, 95. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. But I hear that nowadays you're actually doing something else aside from Wing Commander. What, what are you working on right now? <laughs> actually, I spent the last week doing Wing Commander stuff at work. But Oh, excellent. <laughs> um, no, uh, no, I'm working on uh, 
Star Citizen with uh, Chris Roberts. Uh, he brought me in early on when we were planning the initial design of the game and the uh, the crowdfunding campaign, and it kind of went a little crazy. So uh, you're obviously the biggest Wing Commander fan ever. How did you meet and get hooked up with Chris Roberts? Um, so when uh, I, I actually met Chris, I think the first time when I was in high school and he was just finishing up the movie, um, I guess he we got to corresponding when he was doing his final edits of the movie and we just stayed in touch ever since. And as Electronic Arts stopped making Wing Commander games, I still wanted there, I wanted to there to be Wing Commander stuff, so I spent all that time, you know, getting to know the guys behind it and learning, you know, all the stories, uh, and uh, just kept in touch with Chris over the years. Every couple of years, he would try to pitch some new Wing Commander project. Um, he wanted to do a TV show, and there was he was going to come back to EA and do a GameCube game, and there was another project with EA, and he, he would always ask me, you know, hey, help me with the pitch, and maybe that will be a job for you if this is a success, and it never was. Um, so for Star Citizen, I was like, well, I, I, I was really tired of crowdfunding at that point because like pretty much every week at WC News you would get an email from somebody like, I'm going to make it a fund it. Um, but I was like, okay, well, this is Chris Roberts. He's, I'll do whatever I can for him, but I don't think this is going to work. Uh, but it did. And then it turns into the most successful crowdfunding game ever. You really weren't sure it was actually going to work? Not, not when we set it out, because, you know, it, it wasn't Wing Commander. Um, I, I couldn't even be sure we were going to get the Wing Commander fans on board. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Uh, who's got other questions? Well, I, I just want to say, I, I'm not a backer, unfortunately, of Star Citizen, only because I, I really like the single-player aspect of Wing Commander. And at the time, I remember they said that they weren't sure if there was going to be single-player or not. Is that still the case, or is it, is it going to be single-player now? Well, actually, they just made an announcement about that, including uh, how they do pricing and other stuff. Um, instead of putting in, I think it's, what is it, $60, spend for a full pledge? You can just get just the uh, squadron portion, which is the first-person shooter portion of it, or you can go just the part for the Persistent Universe, which is my favorite part, the spaceship combat. Um, or you can do both, and like buying the other one is a little bit cheaper then. So, but the cool thing is, I I don't know if you wrote the announcement or who from RSI did, um, but yes. I really like the fact that the, um, the two halves of the game interact still with each other, so even if you just play the FPS you're still influencing everything else in the other half of the game. So I don't want to just play the FPS. I don't want to play everything, but I but I prefer like the campaign. Like when Joe was showing the map before, it reminded me of the Wing Commander campaign where like if you screw up and you go down to the <laughs> bad outcome and if you do well you go to the good outcome and I really enjoy that. I don't that know if there is that. Game. Ben, talk about the first player the, the single player game. So um, essentially, we're doing two games. Um, one of them is Squadron 42, which is the that's Wing Commander. It's it's Chris doing his basically back to his roots, but with uh, you know Hollywood actors and video scene. It's not really it's all motion capture now, so it's not it's not uh, Mark Hamill in front of a green screen anymore. But that's it's the single player campaign. It's uh, a full game in and of itself, uh, and that's going to come out a little bit later this year. Whereas the uh, the Star Citizen half is it's privateer. It's uh, here's a universe. Go explore and do whatever you want in it. Um, so what's what's fun about that is I saw some uh, some big names like Gary Oldman and uh, Gillian Anderson and some folks. Uh, curious, have you gotten to meet those people? Occasionally, because um, we'll have them come here for interviews in LA and so on. Um, the, the actual motion capture shoot was in London, which I did not go to. But uh, we're, we're right here in L.A., um, so whenever they're doing press or something, we, we went into some of them. We had John Ray Davies come on our live stream a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's cool. So what is that 
first what is that first game called that you said? I didn't hear what you said. Ben. Sorry? What's that first the single player game called? The one that's like Wing Commander? Quadrant twenty two. Quadrant twenty two. Squadron forty two. Is it possible? Is it possible to go buy that now? Like, is there a link for that or something? Um, not yet. It'll be. Uh, you know, I think in a couple of weeks there'll be a pre-order for it. Uh, but you know, I just wait for it to come out before. You know, with, with the other you know with the multiplayer stuff, you can we're building it in front of people, and you can play it as you go. With the single player, it's all going to come out at once. Do you know if there'll be a boxed edition, since this is the big uh, box PC game collector's group? Question: Could there be a box? Because <laughs> I like boxes. <laughs> so, uh, will there be a boxed of, uh, edition? I don't. I think he's like he's, he's bandwidth is low. Will there be a boxed edition of Squadron Forty Two available retail? Uh, yes, there will. Um, and we did a we did a physical box uh, in, during the Kickstarter. I think it's not available right now, but there will be a, another a box edition. But not as cool as the Kickstarter one, correct? <laughs> no, no, we'll take care of our original batteries first. <laughs> so I'll have a better box than Stewart, because that's the only thing that's important right now. <laughs> yeah, but I can focus on the part that I like the best. So you know, there's a trade-off, I guess. eBay. That's awesome. <laughs> so I have a kind of a fun story to tell, Wing Commander related, not just uh, hi, sorry, uh, hijack really everything. Connection. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, at Dragon Con a few years ago, and I know that you're a Dragon Con um, uh, aficionado as well. Uh, Malcolm McDowell was there. Uh, you know Malcolm McDowell, the famous actor. He was in uh, Wing Commander. Yes, he was there too. Ago, I think. Yeah, I went up to him to get his autograph at Dragon Con, and because um, it's the first time I had seen him there, and I walked up to him and I said, uh, uh, "Thank you." You know, I did the whole spiel, and I said, uh, "I'm probably the only person here who knows you best from Wing Commander," is what I told him. And with no prodding from me whatsoever, Malcolm McDowell says, uh, "Oh yes, Admiral Tallwin." So like he like remembered the character and everything, which I thought was like super cool that he's you know because. You have we would imagine that this would be like a throwaway project for someone who's been in Clockwork Orange and worked with you know huge directors and stuff, but he must have a so mind. Funny that, enough, at that same. So at, at that same Dragon Con, I uh, I went to see Malcolm McDowell because I was a Wing Commander fan, and I brought to have him sign uh, one of the Wing Commander novels. Is the it's like the biography of Admiral Tallwin. So I had him sign it, and then they had David Warner there too, who played Admiral Tallwin in the movie. So uh, I got two uh, two Tallwins. Now I need to. Next time I'm in Austin, I need uh, Martin Davies, who did the voice of Tallwin in Wing Commander too. Very cool. That's very cool. Uh, um, uh, I got uh, the guy who played Maniac. I can't. His name has escaped me now. The, he plays Bob Wilson. Bob Wilson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always just call him Biff. Uh, he was at the first Dragon Con everyone too, and I, I made a similar statement to him, and he also remembered. So I just think it's cool that these guys remember um, working on this stuff. There's actually a thing I wanted to ask. Like, was was there a offering to you know all of the principal actors from Wing Commander 3 and 4 to star in Star Citizen? Because like Tom Wilson was as a maniac, you know, amazing. Like. Wouldn't there like he didn't reprise his role, and I wanted to ask why. Uh, no, the only one we have back uh, that anyone knows about anyway is uh, Mark Hamill, who's uh, and John Rizzo be... Davis. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened with Tom Wilson. I know he and Chris are still friends. Um, it may have just been scheduling or something. Okay. So Ben, who who do you have back that we don't know about yet? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> oh well. Nice try, Stuart. Nice try. It didn't work. <laughs> so, so a different question. So, Ben, Joel said at the beginning that you started WC News. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. 
So what's what's the story behind that? You just just one day you just decide to start a website? Well, um, back in uh, back in 1995, a bunch of my uh, uh, you know, you, it was kind of when the web was starting to form, and you're getting these communities. And I had my couple of Wing Commander buddies, and I don't know, we just started doing our like Wing Commander news site. Uh, I guess that was what you did back then. It was kind of just when the the first like daily update sites were starting to come together, and uh, just loved Wing Commander. Uh, and then in uh, 1998. Origin was getting ready to do their first uh, digital distribution game, uh, Wing Commander Secret Ops, and it was going to be like a free dis free episodic game that they released every every week for seven weeks. And uh, the president of Origin at the time, Neil Young, uh, came and he said, "Hey, I love your uh, Wing Commander site. Do you want to do the official Wing Commander site for Origin?" And uh, we said, "Sure." And that's how we got to do WC News, um, and they hosted us and gave us Wing Commander information for a while, and of course there was never another Wing Commander game from them, so they eventually got tired of us, uh, but we figured we'd just keep it going and kind of like tell the history of Wing Commander projects and stuff, and it's been going ever since. Very cool. Well, the thing that I like about that site the most is that most sites are just news, but you guys have given a lot to the community in terms of releasing material that wasn't available. So one example is what I was trying to find before, and I found it while you were off camera for a second. I never even knew there was a Wing Commander Academy cartoon. Um, you know, <laughs> I never heard of it. When I saw it on your site, I was like, holy cow, there's a Wing Commander cartoon, and it has like all the original voices of these guys doing uh, doing their voices, and... And I was blown away, and I was downloading them. I don't know what format it was in at the time, real real, real media or something, or some really old format. <laughs> you used to watch them. And then, and then it got released so, on DVD as well. So. What's the story behind that? <laughs> ben, did you guys find these somewhere? Or? Well, um, it's a long story that I can tell. <laughs> it... Uh, it was back in 1994, 95, Origin essentially went to Hollywood and they started pitching uh, primarily Ultima. Do you want to do an Ultima cartoon? Do you want to do an Ultima fantasy show? And uh, studios said, uh, no, but uh, we're interested in Wing Commander. So um, Universal, which they had pitched an Ultima cartoon to, came back and said, no, but we know you'd have Wing Commander. Will you license that to us? Um, and uh, they did uh, a 13 episode single season in uh, aired in uh, 1996 uh, just after Wing Commander 4 the, the year Wing Commander 4 came out end of the year started airing Wing Commander cartoon um, I was I guess a junior in high school at the time and I thought it was the most exciting thing in the world uh, I would uh I would tape every single episode in the highest quality possible tape. Um, I remember skipping out of the SAT early because I had to get home to tape the first airing of Wing Commander Academy. I didn't press my VCR's automatic tape thing. Um, so when we when we started uh, doing WC News, um, I was like, we and yeah, we we had those we made those real media files out of my tapes. And uh, I was like, well, let's, let's ask Origin if we can post it. They probably don't actually have a legal right to say we can do this, but it'll be on them if anything bad happens. <laughs> um, and they were like, sure, we don't know what that is. Go ahead and post it on the web. Um, so for many, many years, um, and we, I, I did new encodes of them every couple of years as technology got better. But for years and years and years, every Academy that you could download or watch online or you would buy it like the dealer's room of a SCSI convention was the one that I had dubbed off of uh, USA Network uh, when I was a teenager. Um, so then a couple of years a couple of years ago, I guess 2012, I got a cease and desist from Universal Pictures after all these years. And I was so I replied and said well, you know, our origin systems actually gave us permission, but of course we don't want to damage your copyright claim to this, la, 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 la. And uh, then at the end I added, uh, 
by the way, can I ask uh, why the interest in Wing Commander Academy? Uh, if there's a project going on, I'd love to help. I've worked with this and this and this. And um, the woman wrote me back, and she was like, oh, my gosh, no one's ever been nice to me when I've sent out one of these notices. So I'll tell you, uh, we've just licensed this to this Canadian DVD company, and they're going to put together a DVD. Them. Um, so I got in touch with this company, and I found the person who was supposed to be producing the DVD, and he said, yeah, we, we were doing that, but it's been canceled because we are missing 13 seconds of footage from one of the episodes. Uh, it's uh, episode 10 on the DVD. And uh, I said, well, that's no problem. Um, I've got these old dubs, and we could use that, or we could try to find one of the people who worked on it. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked to writers and producers and so on in the past. Um, so I ended up actually tracking down the uh, the showrunner who had his beta master tapes, um, convinced him to mail them to this uh, Canadian company. And um, if you watch uh, if you watch the episode, there's this very brief segment where the quality dips in the video, and that's uh, that's what we did. That's so cool. For 13 it's seconds. a great story. Yeah, that is so not. cool. We have to frame that particular letter too, because that's that's got to be one of the best things to ever get. Something it's universal. crazy that they were going to hold that whole thing up for 13 seconds. Yeah, 13 seconds, nothing. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was glad I asked. I actually have some Incommander Academy stuff here. Uh, one thing I found a lot of since I I moved to uh, Los Angeles a couple of years ago for for Star Citizen and. Uh, You'll find like storyboards and uh, backgrounds in thrift shops here. Um, so I've got a whole stack of the. Oh wow! Art. wow. Uh, that is awesome. It really is. I don't have any of that. Um, so you, if not for you, I would not be holding this DVD. Is basically what you just said. You not only you downloaded the thing, but you also stopped it from canceling it. So it's all. It's just, how come your name is not like on here in very big letters? Ben Lesnick. <laughs> no, no. It would be on the back with all the credits, thanks to so-and-so. <laughs> I do see Chris Roberts' name, but uh, it sounds like some more credit is required. <laughs> oh, they, they credit me in a couple of these things. Uh, if you like, look at the, the movie novel, I'm in there. and uh, uh, There's a star system named after me in the map that came with Prophecy. <laughs> well, the other thing I was going to say about WC News is, is this game, which I think I think this is the same secret option you're talking about before, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of the Wing Commander Prophecy Goal, unless it's something completely different. But I bought this in when it came out like an electronics boutique. I guess I waited until it was on sale because I got it for $14.99. But uh, I was always wondering if there's a DVD edition to this because Wing Commander 4 had a DVD edition. And I'm like, where's the DVD edition? And it comes on like, I don't know, three or four or five CDs, I can't remember anymore, but a bunch of CDs. And then one day, all of a sudden, your website basically said, hey, we found the DVDs, and we're offering the high-resolution movies to everybody to download. It's like just so freaking awesome. So thank you for that. <laughs> that, was, that? that was one of my holy grails. Um, back in... Uh, in 97, they did Wing Commander Prophecy. Wing Commander 5, for some reason, in the late 90s... Uh, it became marketing, no, you were not allowed to have a number in your title anymore. So it was Wing Commander Prophecy instead of Wing Commander 5 and Ultima Ascension instead of Ultima 9. Um, anyway, uh, they, they uh, Wing Commander, it, this, it was very, very early in DVD. Uh, one of the very first interactive DVDs pressed was Wing Commander 4, which was released exclusively through... Uh, the Creative Lab sold like a $500 bundle CD, DVD-ROM drive with the disc and the MPEG encoder card that you had to have back then. I remember I worked all summer at camp so I could earn enough money to buy that at the time. But um, the company that did that conversion uh, was called Daylight, which was run by a former producer on uh, Wing Commander 4, Mark Day. And uh, after finishing Wing Commander 4, he did this... I, I knew that he had done the same process for uh, Wing Commander Prophecy. Uh, theoretically, it's part of like the Next Generation bundle for Creative Labs. And for whatever reason, they, they went with a different game as the pack-in and just never released uh, the DVD. 
So um, for years and years, it was just searching and asking people if they had copies and trying to find out who worked on it until we, we finally hit on uh, hit on a remaining copy. Uh, they sent it to us, and we uh, got it online for everybody. Have you ever considered being like a private detective or something? <laughs> Probably make a lot of money. Right, but only uh, video game related crimes, though. <laughs> <laughs> or Wing Commander related, I suppose. I want to make sure that it's perfectly clear. There is a guy in the Wing Commander community who always goes nameless, but he is the brains behind all that stuff. His name's HCL. Is that correct? Was he involved in the Prophecy conversion? Yes. Um, so w w Prophecy is... A, a Wing Commander games are terribly unmoddable, but um, with a little inside information from the development team and... Uh, some fan genius. There, there are a group of people who have at least taken apart Wing Commander Prophecy, so it was very easy to, for them to quickly put together a patch that l brought the DVD movies back into existing copies. The fan community for Wing Commander News is second to none. I have not seen... I mean, yeah, there's a million people who make Doom levels, and they go, oh, the Doom fan community, oh, I made a level level, big deal. But... When the Wing Commander guys get together and their fan base is so strong, they come out with amazing stuff. Extremely, extremely cool. So, yeah. so I have a question, Ben, actually. I, I would like to get to the Silverheart thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask, like, okay, I found the footage. Uh, actually, I saw it a couple months ago and completely forgot about uh, about this video. And like, it was during the discussion with Joe that I actually remembered that I, I saw it and and was able to find it again. Question is, I found out that Chris actually bought the rights when he left Origin. Does he still hold the rights to the whole Silverheart, you know, fran franchise? Let's say. He does. Um, he carried them with him to Digital Anvil, hoping to make it there. That never worked out. Yeah. Um, I think in the early 2000s, he actually pitched it at Activision for a time. He it with him, and he uh, he still has it today. He, he was like, uh, when you found that video, I showed Chris because uh, I was, what is this? Did you direct this? Um, and he said, no, no, that looks way too Austin. Um, it was probably something done in pre-production. Yeah. Uh, but and he said he, he said you know I I still have that and you know someday I'd still like to make that game so uh, I thought that was really cool. Uh, yeah. We so, have, so maybe after a Star Citizen he might you know get to it one day maybe. <laughs> it's possible. Um, we we have all of Chris's old everything from his garage is <laughs> stored in our office now. Um, I've been slowly archiving all the Wing Commander stuff, but there's you know binders and binders of Silverheart uh, scripts and notes and set plans and stuff that he still has. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I know Branislav would be very, very interested in some silver heart scams. <laughs> I know I would be. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> with working now with Star Citizen, is there any stuff from like Chris Roberts or anyone from the original Wing Commander stuff that you've gotten and say in like the past year or two that you're just it was like the icing on the cake to finally be able to get your hands on or to see and then put up on WC News? Um, no, nothing too... It's, I, it's, it's little things like, oh, I finally found a Privateer 2 script and, uh, oh, here's the storyboards from the Wing Commander movie. Um, I'm trying to think what I've found in the last couple of years. Uh, so I'm sure having hmm. Chris and some of those guys gives you access to stuff that maybe they still had stashed away and never made its way out into some of any of our collections, especially yours and Joe's, which is now paling in comparison to yours by far. You know, some, there's I mean, there's the one game I'm still looking for. Uh, there's a completely completed uh, Wing Commander 2 conversion for the Super Nintendo that I... That's my white whale. Uh, so, uh, but I have... I, I, everybody I ask in the industry who I, I run into, that's like, do you know anybody who worked on this? Do you know anybody who might have a copy? 
Uh, but no luck yet. Um, I did start uh, abusing my uh, international uh, fame, uh, fame by asking people in other countries if they can send me uh, Wing Commander stuff. It's, it's like I've got the, uh, the Czechoslovakian version of the Wing Commander novels thanks to uh, Star Citizen Backer who was kind enough to uh, pick them up for me. Oh my god, I never saw that. I didn't even like. I'm I'm from Slovakia, and I didn't even know we released this. That oh, is the coolest thing. Great. There's a whole. They did six of them. Um, apparently the uh, apparently translated um, English language sells fairly well. Um, and rather than have some deal with uh, Electronic Arts or Origin. They bought the rights to the books directly from the author. Um, I, I don't read the language, but I, I don't think there are any references to it being a video game. I think it's all, here's a series of pulpy sci-fi books that William Forstchen wrote. Uh, but they, they did six of those. So I fully expect to see Bratislav, you know, showing off his copies once he digs through that old bookstore near him. <laughs> well, I'm not in Slovakia anymore, that's the problem, but I'll definitely look for them when I'm back at home. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, another question, Ben, like, okay, you must have gathered a lot of stuff over the years and found many treasures and so on. What was the most useless thing you actually <laughs> found? <laughs> you know, something that you, uh, you, you say to yourself, do I want to keep that? Do I want to throw it away? Did you kept everything you ever acquired. Sorry, I got cut off. I didn't hear. Oh, okay. Like, over the years, you got a lot of stuff. So. No worries. Uh, did you throw something out? Did you did you collect it? What's the most useless thing you collected about Wing Commander over the years? You know, some, some stupid piece of paper that you said to yourself, I really don't want to keep this, but you know, you kept it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me answer that question with... Uh, um, okay, this would have been good if I could have grabbed it immediately. But I have a Wing Commander chocolate bar here somewhere. <laughs> a what? <laughs> it, it's from a convention in Germany in 1996. Uh, advertising Wing Commander 4, and it's uh, it's like a little candy bar they handed it out. No, <laughs> I must have left it in the other room. I'm sorry. You uh, have to I have find that. I need that. That is awesome. Yeah, I did not expect it that. <laughs> it's too bad we can't all eat it online, because that would be awesome viewing for the YouTube channel. Well, Joe, I'm, Joe, I'm not the only one who saves like 20 year old consumable products. If Joe could have a pizza crust chewed by Richard Gary, I think you could have a Wing Commander chocolate bar. <laughs> and, you know, I've got another. I yeah. just need one that Chris took a bite out of and then he just stored it away in an airside vacuum sealed bag. I have to say, I think Joe's got you beat on this particular one because uh, a chocolate bar at least has ingredients in it. And he just held up a water bottle, so that would have been the most useless <laughs> yeah, thing. Useless item. Because it's literally just molecules. Yeah, the water bottle, bottle full of molecules. It was slightly flavored. Uh, pretty flavored. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. It, it was. Uh, it's flavored water. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I I'm didn't. sure it is. It's got point. like a slight flavor. I think now it's cesspool flavor. It tastes it's like diseases that were eradicated is the, what it tastes the like. The other day, I was actually just... <laughs> Say it again, the other day, what? Um, no, the... I got a, uh, a feeder scanner in my office just three days ago, and I've been, I've been scanning all of Chris's Wing Commander of the movie production documents. And it got to one that was just like a bunch of post-it notes that were things like, call your dentist. And I was like, do I need And I opted to yes. So uh, we will have a historical record of the time Chris 
That's the archivist attitude. Just keep it all scanned. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. So, uh, Wing Commander 3 was like a huge game in, in my life. Uh, funny enough, um, when that game came out, uh, I had a Cyrex 46 100 megahertz computer. I remember it as clear as day. It was a piece of crap. And uh, my first memory of playing Wing Commander 3 was of playing this choppy, like, weird uh, experience because my computer was nowhere close to being up to snuff enough to play that game. Uh, I was wondering if you, uh, did you have to upgrade your computer when Wing Commander 3 came out? Because I think everyone else did. Or were you prepared? Oh, I hope we didn't lose him. Yeah, I think we lost him. No, he's back. Sorry, my, I'm having trouble staying connected here. I apologize. No, that's all right. Did you did you have to upgrade your computer when Wing Commander three came out, or did you uh, were you prepared for it when it dropped? I think Ben needs to use that technology oh. to use Wing Commander itself, where like the little face appears at the bottom and you know, a four on my wig. <laughs> that was higher technology than we have today, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> That was actually one of the things that blew my mind about that game was that when you were flying, it had those little videos of the little pilots in the corner, you know? I remember that as a youngster, that just blew my mind. So, Ben, he was asking, he was asking if you needed to upgrade your, your PC to run Wing Commander 3. That's what, that was the question. Oh, um, no, I had upgraded to a 486.66 earlier that year so I could finally play Privateer. I bought Privateer before I could play it, and like for months, I would just read the manual over and over again. So um, I, I finally cashed in like my savings bonds or something and bought a, a Gateway 2000 486 Wow! Uh, so I was all ready for Wing Commander three. But it was an Intel, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's. But I remember my uh, my best friend at the time. We were super competitive, and he he would brag about his computer even though and his 386, and then I had a 486. And then Wing Commander 3 came out, and he was like, no, no, it'll run just fine. My, my computer's great. It's been super overclocked. And uh, I remember going to his house the day Wing Commander 3 came out, way for Christmas, he got it the day it came out. And it just, one frame, wait a minute, another frame. <laughs> uh, oh, the good old days. I don't think we ever actually... Okay, so that has been one of my holy grails as well. And I'm hoping that you stumble across it. They've already done the high-res version of Wing Commander Prophecy. We know about the DVD version of Wing Commander 4 that, that Wing Commander News and you and your team helped bring to light to do high-res. We need high-res Wing Commander 3. When is that coming? Yeah, Wing Commander 3 is a tougher one because uh, nobody knows where, the, you know... We don't know if the elements are surviving. You know, the, at least Wing Commander Four and Wing Commander Prophecy, they both had DVD versions that were developed. They they did the proper transfer. I've never found the Wing Commander Three footage uh, in a high enough quality. So you're saying up till now there has not been, you know, a high res copy of the Wing Commander Three video. No, no. I mean, you can get a little bit of improvement by switching to one of the console versions. Um, I've got some dailies and stuff on VHS tape, but it's it's not an improvement. Oh, well, anything's yeah, got to be an improvement in that 256 color. Seems box. like the the 3DO version of that game was like the if movie quality was like the best one. If I'm not mistaken. You think you have Wing Commander One or Wing Commander Three, Joel? Wing Commander Three. Wing Commander Three. There was a 3D the version, version of Wing Commander 3? Yep. Wow, I didn't know that. Cool. It came out for the CDI, too, if I'm not mistaken, but I think that no one could actually play it because the controller sucks so bad. But the, uh, the 3D version was pretty good. Oh, we're still losing him. Ben, are you still with us? Uh, sorry, I keep fading in and out. I, I heard 3DO and then nothing. Just blame so, Google. 
<laughs> yeah, we were just saying that the video quality on the 3DO version of Wing Commander 3 was the best out of all of them, as far as I know. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, there's a couple of extra videos on the uh, PlayStation one that aren't in the 3DO, but uh, the quality is best on the 3DO one. Oh, I didn't know that. I actually don't have the game on PS on PlayStation, but it's interesting. So Ben, you were nice enough to mention to me that you actually said that Star Citizen may uh, be nice enough to give out uh, an account to to a Star Citizen account or a ship. Oh, sure, yeah, if, if you guys have a process for giveaways, you can give away a couple of, uh, like, the starter packages. The only process we have is that it's never me, so I'm out. But I believe that it should go to somebody sitting right here who does not currently have a Star Citizen account. Who in our group already has a Star Citizen account? I already have one, and I love playing the arena constantly. As long as Pascal is out of any contest we have, I'm good. So <laughs> <laughs> Pascal already has everything. No, no, no. But I, I, I have an account, that's right. And I'm still waiting for the single player part. And the box, of course, because I guess I begged for the box. I, I hope I did. I guess I did. I'm not sure. I, I did. Maybe. Stuart, do you have an account for Star Citizen? I don't think so. I'm just trying to check right now. I, I, I don't think I do. I'm pretty sure I don't. But, you uh, kickstart that many accounts that you're not even sure? <laughs> no, I, I don't have an account. I, don't, I, I never backed it, like I said, because there was no single player at the time. Well, who, um, votes, who votes for Stuart having, getting, getting the... Uh, Oh, I don't know why I'm doing this People either. put hands up? Oh my gosh, alright. <laughs> I think we need to initiate Stuart Feldhammer into the Star yeah. Citizen universe. Stuart needs us badly. You'll love it. The It's been a tough journey, I think, for the team a little bit over there with a lot of the crap some backers had, have given the team. But even just the status of where it's at and with the recent announcements, it's definitely been very exciting. And any kind of good space sim is very much needed currently, I think, in the video game industry. I would definitely try it if you, if you manage to hook me up with one. I certainly appreciate it very much, and I would try it. Um, did I hear there was two available? Because if there's two available... You can't have if both. I heard correctly... You can't. I, I don't have want two. <laughs> I don't want two. Maybe we could have a you know a contest for people that comment on the YouTube video or something like that. That's what I was uh, thinking. Is that okay with you, Ben? No, like, I was thinking like five. Uh, if oh, you have, like, right. five people. Uh, Joel, do you think you could uh, set up some kind of a contest? Sure, I'll have to think of something. Uh, but yeah, we can do something. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Ben. That's very generous of you and, uh, and Star Citizen. Oh, no, happy to. Um, I think it's going to be cool. Uh, it's absolutely amazing from what I've seen so far. Stuart, for, for you and for the people, for other people who haven't seen it, I mean, they're simple things. You literally can fly around in a ship, attack somebody else, literally board their ship, get into a first-person shooter match with the crew, steal their ship, then fly to an enemy base, open your porthole, fly out in a spacesuit, fly through space, break into the other ship, and take control and fight in that ship, too. It's amazing. So the, so the multiplayer game is like 100% playable at this point, is what you're saying. I mean, it's not finished, but it's it's playable. Like, you can go in and play it and have a good time, it sounds like. Is that right? Ben, is that accurate? Oh, um, so, yeah, we released just the very, very basic... For, for the multiplayer stuff, we're releasing it uh, in the open. So we, you know, we have systems we're still building. We have others that are complete. Um, 
we've kind of built like a single star system you can go in and play around with now and see the scale of it and uh, how you go from the different game modes seamlessly. Um, it's you know it's it's very 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 basic right now, but it's it's really cool seeing like the emerging gameplay that's already happening. We we built enough systems that people have figured out they can you know take the vending machine out of the space station and stick it in a ship and race it across the galaxy and uh, people being pirates and escort fighters. It's 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 great. Yeah, what's cool now is that. The other people, the backers of the Kickstarter, we had to wait, I mean, years to see this kind of thing. Any new people who get in will be able to jump in and play right away and watch the stuff all come together fluidly now. So it's amazing to see, you know, now is the amazing time. Now's the time to get into this game because you don't have to wait. And you don't have to How wait like are? every week and watch a new video of Ben telling us what will be coming. How many people are in there at any given time at this point? Is it very populated? It's pretty populated. Um, there's pretty much always somebody... We're, we're always running a couple hundred instances at least uh, with each, you know, 24 players. So, uh, That's a lot. And you've got, you got, you know, this whole group of streamers who have... We... When when we set out to do like the public facing part of the company, my inspiration was Origin Systems in 1995. What I wished I could have seen back then, because I, I remember you would read about like oh how they would have the raft races and the the teams would have fun together and they would vandalize Chris Roberts' car and so on and you know you you wanted to be part of that group and make games. So when when I got to set up how we interact with the public on Star Citizen, I wanted to share that. Um, so that's the most fun you can have a Star Citizen right now is watching it come together and you get to know the people on the team and uh, uh, I hope people are having fun with it. So just to be clear, you have invited everybody from our group to come to LA and vandalize Chris Roberts' car, right? <laughs> uh, yes. You, you heard it here first. Breaking news. The big box PC game collectors, hard hitting <laughs> news. We're gonna go vandalize Chris Roberts' car. Um, wait, maybe we should talk about that because the police might get involved. This is horrible. Should have never mentioned this. <laughs> no, the, the, the reason I think of that is because Chris emailed me a couple of days ago. He was talking to some reporter on Origin, and they were talking about his car that he had bet. Uh, he'd bet the president of the company. Wing Commander would sell X number of copies. And he was like, oh, maybe Ben has a picture of the car. And uh, the only picture of the car I have is one from Point of Origin where it's been vandalized by the Ultimate Team, and it's got, like, <laughs> rules written over the windshield. <laughs> so, Ben, is it safe to say that you're living the dream right now? Absolutely. I could not be happier. Awesome. So for anybody, so for anybody in in advance, I already have copyright on the spray paint on the door that says "Tie Fighter Rules." <laughs> and on that bombshell, uh, we've it's, our hour has passed. Ben, thank you so much for coming. It was a it was so much fun. Um, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come talk to us. Um, guys, have a great day. And we'll see you in Star Citizen. Uh, I want to do, did want to say, uh, before we go, I almost forgot, uh, they are trying to create something really special. Uh, if you can, if you're watching this, uh, go help them out however you can with Star Citizen. Um, really, they, uh, whatever you can do for them uh, is just amazing. Uh, everybody, have a good day.